Do you know what this is? On August 3rd, someone named J.H.A. sent a postcard to Paul and Ruth Armstrong saying, See the rabbits on our farm? These are the rabbits right here. And this is the crowd that is waiting to club them to death. Consider this your one and only trigger warning for the bleak world of rabbit drives that I'm about to show you. During the operation of Pest Control Project, over two million jackrabbits were killed or captured in 13 counties in western Kansas. Because this is an historical oddity in which hundreds of thousands of rabbits were herded and exterminated. And it's still oddly relevant today. So these children are cheering about fields full of dead rabbits. But before I show you that, I want to... Has he been there the whole time? Oh, God. How much of that intro did you hear? Did you hear the whole intro? Yeah? Okay, so... Uh, this little guy right here, this is a jackrabbit, uh, which is actually a hare. So technically that's different from a rabbit. And when these guys grow up, they get a lot bigger. And you're going to get a lot bigger too. Nobody's going to club you to death. No. Jackrabbits are bigger. Some would say less cute. But I would not say less cute, would I? No. No, I wouldn't. Black-tailed and white-tailed jackrabbits were the most common jackrabbits in rabbit drives. And I am just gonna put you... Okay, so what exactly was a rabbit drive? And why did they do this? Some rabbit drive veterans described it for the University of Kansas. You made these huge 40-acre fenced-in areas, pens, and then men, women, and children in a line just like in this postcard, moved forward, driving the rabbits forward too. Sometimes it was in a circle. Rabbits hopped forward as they kind of condensed and people concentrated all those rabbits in a big circle. And then... They used clubs partly for safety. Remember, they were in a circle, so they couldn't be shooting at each other <laughs> when they missed a rabbit. But they also used it to conserve bullets. These rabbits weren't worth a bullet, and there were way too many of them to shoot. To be clear, some people were horrified by this at the time, too. This period description shows that while a lot of people were at the rabbit-killing party, not everybody was like, yay, this is great! The author calls it nauseating to the extreme, and says that some men took fiendish delight while some tender-hearted persons saved some alive. Yet others did think that it was exciting sport. And sometimes it could be a big party where people showed up and sold beer amid the clouds of fur. But whatever the mixed feelings, this was a pretty common thing to happen. In Nevada, these were so common that jackrabbit scalps became an accepted medium of exchange. Five scalps for a drink because the state had a going rate for them. Why? So, jackrabbits are pretty interesting pets. God, how did you get out? <sighs> okay, sorry. Um, jackrabbits are pretty interesting pests. Rabbit drives are a response to the ways that they flourish. If you read literature about their growth, they actually grow in population in drought periods, and their population, it, it booms. They don't just survive dusty areas, they kind of do better in them. So in the plains, American Indians did rabbit drives forever, most people say as a means of food. And American settlers copied the techniques when they started doing a lot of farming. You can find lots of rabbit drives in desert areas of California, like this one from 1892. You see, the farmers felt that the rabbits were pests because they kept eating their crops, and the more arid the climate, the more desperate the farmers were to preserve their crops. In one county in California, for example, in 1888, jackrabbits took out $600,000 worth of crops. This is in the 1880s. Remember, this is when a nickel could buy you, like, you know, a Maserati. Don't, don't think about that too hard. The man versus jackrabbit dynamic became most intense in Kansas during the Dust Bowl in the 1930s. 
The long-eared pest, in the absence of other food, went so far as to dig alfalfa roots out of the ground and eat the barks from the young trees. We normally see Dust Bowl pictures like these famous ones. But this postcard, it's a Dust Bowl picture too. Dust Bowl rabbit drives had even more motivation than those California parties. They were even more desperate during a Great Depression where the farmland was ruined. Some of the rabbits killed in drives early in 1935 were used as food for human consumption. And in many localities, they were skinned and ground for tankage. Farmers reported that they made excellent feed for chickens and hogs. This 1958 article, well after the Dust Bowl, shows that jackrabbits continued to cause real damage to crops. These Kansans were slaughtering rabbits, but they weren't just gleeful. There was probably a little desperation there, too. So let's be real here. No matter how tough you are, the sight of people clubbing tens of thousands of jack Shh. Last night I felt the storm Coming fast and broke the wall Scattered glass across the floor I know this is the final war There's no use trying to pretend I want you to go now. I want you to stay away from content farms like... Like mine. They're only gonna hurt you. They're only gonna hurt you. Stay. Stay. Baby, I can't fix that hole. I'm done being the target of your crazy lies. Do what you can to save your life. Uh, where was I? Clubbing rabbits is shocking. That's what I was saying. Did rabbit drives work? A lot of my sources are kind of skeptical. They seem to say that uh, natural cycles of disease and breeding ended the growth in the rabbit population, not the rabbit drives. Um, on the other hand, I can't help but think that, you know, tens of thousands of dead rabbits in a field had to have uh, some effect on the rabbit population. But there's kind of two sides to the story. I think the more important point is that this is not that dissimilar to how we still do a bit of our conservation today. I mean, we typically don't have massive jackrabbit drives like this, but state DNRs are constantly changing bag limits and seasons for hunters based on the conservation aims of the department. They're limiting how much you can hunt based on how many animals they want out there in the world. You wanna change the turkey population? Change the bag limit. A great example is when Wisconsin allowed wolf hunting in 2021. Freakonomics did a great episode about this on their podcast. In the US at least, we do a lot of our animal regulation through the interests of individuals and limiting how much or how little they can hunt. That's not a world away from what we did with rabbit drives. I've got no better way to do this, but I think that the rabbit drives are interesting because they're an example that help you see the necessity of this mode of regulation for such a big problem. Uh, but also just how weird it is. I think you can see the complexity of that system more clearly, for good and for ill, when you look at postcards like these, and you see these rabbits and the crowd closing in behind them. Hi, if you haven't been here before, this is a personal channel where I post personal videos, history videos, stuff like that. It really helps the channel if you like and subscribe. I'm trying to say everything before I have to breathe in again. Ah, 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 bye.